is kind of going a little bit towards a different direction. There's a big, there's big attention in the fruitarian community fruitarian. and the 80 10 10. Um, and what they advocate is a raw fruit and vegetable diet. And I, you know, personally, I enjoy eating a ton of fruit and uh, banana sure. smoothies. Um, but I was wondering if uh, I could get your thoughts on if right. this is a healthy. Oh, certainly it's better than the American diet. Yeah. You know, certainly it's an R10 trend toward, uh, toward a better diet. Uh, and certainly people like this because fruit tastes good because it's full of sugar. Sure. And when you, when you blend something, when you grind it up, you release the simple sugar so it tastes good. I mean, carrot juice tastes better than carrots. Yeah. Uh, but this is not the human diet. Now, you'll live on it. You'll live on more successfully than, <clears throat> than you would on the Western diet for sure. Uh, the human diet is a starch-based diet. It always has been, always will be. You'll find me no populations of people throughout all of human history that lived on a raw, raw diet or a fruit diet. I mean, Steve Jobs was a fruitarian for a short period of time. Yeah. Now, I, otherwise, you can find me some isolated people who are brave enough and strong enough to live on fruit and fruit alone. The problem with fruit is it's simple sugars. It's uh, short acting in terms of satisfaction of hunger drive. It just it just doesn't cut it. And plus, fruits are only available during a short season of the year. So if you're going to be a fruitarian in any time of history, what are you going to do in the winter? Yeah. What are you going to do in the spring? You're dead meat. Yep. You know, that never happened. Whereas starches are available all year long. Uh, starches store easily. You can store potatoes for, you freeze dry them, which they did naturally. Uh, 10,000 years ago even, you can store freeze-dried dry potatoes for 10 years. You can take uh, your rice and your corn and your beans and you can put them in a cool, dry place. It'll last for years. So winter comes, you've got food. We are human beings. We have evolved above the lesser primates because of our ability to digest starch. Gorillas and chimpanzees eat fruitarian diets yeah. with perishable vegetables. Yeah. You know, we are... We are greater primates, in, in a sense, whatever, I don't want to get into any arguments, but yeah, we yeah. Uh, have evolved from chimpanzees and apes, and the key to that e evolution has, to, has been that we were able to tap into a high energy source that was reliable all year long yeah. throughout the entire world, and that's starch. So, so hopefully, hopefully your, your folks who are fruitarians and... Uh, follow uh, raw foods diets uh, will do it only temporarily. As I say, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not a practical thing in terms of large numbers of people, in terms of sustainability, in terms of the best health you will get. You must center your diet around starch, rice, corn, potatoes, as people always have, always have, always will. It's the human diet, starch, rice, corn, potatoes, as people always have, always have, always will. It's the human diet. You add some fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, you can vary the amount here and there. If you want to eat animal foods, you know, they're not, they're not healthy. If you want to have candy bars on Halloween, fine. That's Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to have a piece of cake on your birthday, you'll, you'll survive it. But you can't do these things every day, all day long, which is yeah. what Americans do. Turkey. So what are your, what are you, what's your response to uh, Dr. John McDougall's stance on fruit and its sustainability and connection to health and the amount of people that could do it? There's, he covered a lot in there as far as uh, why he thinks fruit doesn't work. Well, I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Well, typically, <clears throat> I don't enjoy getting into arguments uh, first-hand or second-hand or third-hand arguments with people. I, oh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to. In, I'm not trying to entice you into an argument. I, I'm I just... I don't yeah. want to knock John. Right. Um in any way. I don't agree with him that people were freeze-drying potatoes 10,000 years ago. I, I, I can't imagine how that would be possible. You need a vacuum in order to do freeze-drying. Um, and I don't think people could create a vacuum 10,000 years ago. We just didn't have that, that technology. So I don't, I don't know how he came up with that idea. Uh, he openly admits that, that all of our primate cousins thrive on a diet of raw fruits and vegetables and, and we have not gone through any sort of verifiable evolutionary change that makes us better equipped to 
deal with starches than we are with fruits and vegetables. In fact, there aren't any nutrients that you get from starches um, that you can't get from fruits and vegetables. So they're not giving us anything different than what fruits and vegetables already give us. But there are some things they're not giving us, uh, typically very low vitamin C, typically uh, if, if we're eating gluten-containing starches, we're, we're gaining problems that we don't want to have. The idea of fruit only being available for a short part of the year, but starches being available year-round is just plain silly. Uh, we can store fruit and get it year-round. Uh, we can make it travel just like we make starches travel, but I mean, there's mangoes in my local grocery store every day of the year. There's oranges every day of the year. There's bananas every day of the year. Uh, there's lettuce and celery and cucumbers and tomatoes every day of the year. Uh, I don't, I mean, we have, we have the technology to store fruits and vegetables, but we also have the ability to grow them uh, and move them around the planet really efficiently these days. I've grown starchy foods. They're not, harvest time isn't all year round. And personally, if I grow sweet potatoes and harvest them in October, I don't really want to be eating those same sweet potatoes nine or ten months later when they're that old. I'd much rather have fresh fruit. Part of the beauty of, of eating what Dr. McDougall called perishable vegetables is that you know that they're fresh. They're fresh enough to eat. They haven't gone bad. Uh, you buy a box of cereal, you have no idea when that grain was harvested, how many years ago, but it does matter. Fresh is an issue, and everyone knows that fresh food is better for us than food that isn't fresh. So... Personally, I'm, I'm seeing better results on 80-10-10 than I ever did on a starch-based diet. And so I'm going with fruits and vegetables. What is your response to fruit being such a short-acting thing? I, I hear that a lot from the starch-based community that fruit is it's, it's just simple sugars, whereas starch, we've got the complex. So... Can you explain this thing for the... I mean, I've, already, I've already answered that in grain damage. I've answered it in the 80-10-10 diet. I've answered it in nutrition and athletic performance. <laughs> it's a question that comes up now and then, but, you know, we, we have glycogen in our muscles, and that's what we use for fueling activity. We have blood sugar, and when we dip into our blood sugar in order to fuel activity, we're very close to the danger zone. We're about to crash and burn, as they call it, um, I think in, in bicycling, they call it bop till you drop. You know, in running, they call it hitting the wall. Uh, you don't really ever want to draw off of blood sugar for fuel. And so although when you eat fruit, the fruit's sugars get into your bloodstream relatively quickly, that's a good thing. That just means it took less digestive effort to get the fruit sugars into your bloodstream. Um, but the sugars that you use for fuel are coming out of your muscles. They're, they're already stored as glycogen from what you ate two, three, four meals ago. Uh, and so whether the food you eat yields up its sugar in half an hour or in eight hours doesn't matter in any way shape or form in terms of how satiating the food is for length of time uh, but it does matter in terms of satiation by the fact that when you eat fruit your blood sugar levels rise and this gives you a sense of satiation that is relatively rapid compared to that which comes from grains, which is why we see people eating grains um, in, in quantities that often we wonder, wow, how come you're eating so much grain? Where was the trigger to let you know that you'd had enough? And it's why we see a lot of people struggle with weight 
gain issues when they're eating a lot of grains. With 80-10-10 and this whole raw vegan thing, <laughs> there's no you can't find a population of people on earth that have done this <laughs> through history. So if it hasn't been done through history, what makes you think it's going to work now? What, what's your response to that history argument that you may have heard before? Well, I think, I think that for the first couple of million years that humans wandered the planet, basically all they ate was raw fruits and vegetables, and then a little bit of this and that, whatever they happened to come across now and then if they got really lucky. Um, but they weren't downing creatures. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the hunting skills. It was way too dangerous. Um, people were, I mean, the anthropologists all agree that we were gathering, uh, that we were mostly fruit eaters. The dental records show that we were mostly fruit eaters. Uh, I, I don't know how anybody could imagine that we got here now, several million years later, if there wasn't an early history of man thriving on fruits and vegetables, because that's all there was. They weren't farmers. They just picked food. They weren't cooking. They just picked food and ate it. What do you think? I mean, that's what they ate, was fruits and vegetables. That's what there was. That was what's available. And no, societies, this is true, societies uh, where the poor work for the rich and the food is kept under lock and key, well, it's easy to put starches under lock and key, uh, much easier than it is fruits and vegetables. But that's a relatively recent development, a separate issue. As far as our history of eating fruits and vegetables, that's all we ate. That's all there was. It's real straightforward. We've just gone, the only difference now is that we've gone back to it because now technology allows that food to be available to us no matter where we live. You don't have to live within a thousand miles of the equator in order to have a year round supply of fruits and vegetables. So here I am living 2,500 miles north of the equator and I can still get fruits and vegetables daily. No problem. Fresh food. Great response, Doug. So the history really does back it up when you look at it beyond the quote unquote civilized society level. Yeah, if you go back more than 10 or 20,000 years, go back 100,000 years, go back 500,000 years, what do you think people were eating? It's a very simple, simple equation, I think.